Hello and welcome to multiplying polynomials with the box method, also known as the tabular method. So in our first example, we have the product of two binomials. In other words, they both have two terms each, which means we are going to make a box that is two by two. You're gonna take one binomial and write it across the top so that each box has one term. And you're gonna take the other binomial and write it along the right side. It does not matter which binomial goes on top and which binomial goes on the side. I could have wrote the x plus five on the top if I wanted to. What does matter is that we're writing the x plus five along the right side and not the left. We're not gonna write it on the left because when we get into dividing with the box method, it makes a difference. We're specifically gonna want the binomial to be across the right hand side. To fill out what goes inside the box, you're gonna use the grid pattern to multiply. So x times x would give you x squared. Two times x will give you positive two x. Make sure you're keeping your sign, that way you don't forget whether something's positive or negative. x times five is plus five x. And the very last one that is two times five is plus 10. The nice thing that I like about the box method is that when you do it, you will always get your like terms along your diagonals. So you're gonna write out exactly what you see. I see an x squared, and then when I go to the x to the first power, along my diagonal, I see a 2x and a 5x. You're gonna add them together, combine like terms to get 7x, and I see a plus 10 and you are done. Make sure your answer is in standard form, so the term with the largest exponent is first, and your constant is last. For the next example, we have a binomial times a trinomial. So you're gonna make a box that is two by three. Personally, I like to make my boxes three by two. So what that means is that I like to put the trinomial on top and I like to put the binomial along the side. It's just my personal preference. If you made a box the other way and if you put the x minus two up top and the trinomial along the side, you're not wrong. This also works. You will get the exact same answer as me just whatever you like to do. We're gonna fill it out just like we did before. Three x squared times x is going to give you three x cubed. That's because this is really an exponent of one. So the exponent of two plus the exponent of one gives me my exponent of three. The next one, negative four x times x is negative four x squared. 7 times x is 7x. 3x squared times negative 2 is negative 6x squared. Negative 4x times negative 2 is positive, be careful, 8x. And 7 times 2 is negative 14. In this case, we have multiple diagonals, right? So we're going to add along each diagonal separately. Our answer my largest exponent is x cubed. So I'm gonna start with the three x cubed. Go on to the x to the second power. I have a negative six and a negative four along those diagonals. So that's going to give me a negative 10 x squared. Along the next diagonal, eight plus seven is 15 x and my constant. There is one more example, and this is actually a trick. So try to see if you can figure out what is missing in this example. If you need a hint, look at the exponents. Do you notice how the exponents on the left, we have an x squared, an x to the first, and then no x at all. 
but on the right, we have an x squared and then no x at all. So on the left, you're going in order, 2, 1, 0. On the right, we go from x squared to 0 x's. So what we're going to do is we're going to always look for placeholders. What that means is we're going to add in the x to the first to the second binomial. That means we're going to rewrite this problem as x squared plus 3x plus 1. And the next one, we're going to write it as x squared plus 0x. Because if it's 0x, we're really not changing anything. Minus 2. Now your exponents go to 1, 0, x is, right? So now that everything's in order, we have a trinomial times a trinomial. That's a box that is 3 by 3. Does it really matter if you include the placeholder for multiplying? The answer is no. However, it does matter that you include the placeholders when it comes to dividing. So we're going to put it all the time, that way we never forget about it when we're dividing. Write any trinomial you prefer on the top. And write the other one along the side. And just multiply it all out. So now that everything's multiplied out, the nice thing about including the placeholder is if you remember to include it, you can still add along the diagonals because your diagonals will still be like terms. If you leave out the placeholder, well, then you can't add along your diagonals anymore because your diagonals won't be like terms. So there's benefits to including the placeholder for this and for dividing when it's required. We're going to end up with x to the fourth plus 3x cubed. We have a 1x squared minus 2x squared. So that's going to be minus x squared, negative 6x, and minus 2 to get our final answer. So these are your three examples of multiplying with the box method, again, also known as the tabular method.